Everyone's telling you that AI engineer is the hottest job in tech right now. And they're not wrong because salaries are sky high. The demand is real and companies are literally fighting over talent in ways we haven't seen since the early days of software engineering. But here is what nobody's talking about. What happens when the $320 billion in AI spending has to actually justify itself and the returns have to materialize because investors start running out of patience or we have a black swan event. Now, whether we like it or not, something like that is on the horizon and how you position yourself right now will determine whether you fry through that or you're scrambling to figure out your next move. I'm Suleiman, I run my own AI cloud security consultancy and through my academy, I've helped more than 700 IT professionals, engineers and career switchers master cloud and AI like Jay who went from banking to cloud or Mac who went from help desk to AWS. Today, I want to give you the full picture on two careers, AI and cloud engineering because I think there's a more nuanced conversation that we need to have about where these roles are actually in 2026 and beyond. So let's start with what's actually happening in the market right now, because I think this context matters. Big tech is spending $320 billion on AI and cloud infrastructure in 2025, and that number isn't looking to slow down in 2026. Right now, we're in this environment where investors are pouring money into anything with AI because everyone's terrified of missing the next big thing. That's created this incredible job market for AI talent where companies are paying premium salaries and fighting over candidates. But here is what I've learned from working in this industry for over a decade. Okay. These cycles always correct, not a crash necessarily, but definitely correct. Because at some point that spending has to show returns and when it doesn't quite match to hype, companies will start getting more conservative about how they use and deploy AI. And that's what happens. And I think we'll start seeing this play out in 2026, because let's be real, AI is revolutionary, yes. The profits and returns just aren't there right now. And companies aren't going to abandon AI because it's too valuable and the use cases are still there. But what they will do is change how they consume it. And this is where it gets interesting for your career. So instead of building custom solutions on raw open AI and Anthropics APIs where you're managing everything yourself, in my opinion, companies are going to flee to the big cloud providers for safety and leverage of managed services on AWS like Bedrock or SageMaker or even Asian Core for Agents because these are safer, they're more predictable, there's more trust and they come with enterprise support and the cost controls are built in. So the question then becomes, how do you position yourself to win regardless of which direction that the market moves in 2026 and beyond? And what I mean is whether the AI bubble pops or not, what can you do to win as an engineer? Firstly, we need to understand what's actually happening in the AI job market because there's a lot of confusion out there and I wanna give you the real picture. So when you search for AI and machine learning jobs right now, you're going to see a few different titles and they're not all the same thing, even though companies sometimes use them interchangeably. Now, the biggest chunk of the market, we're talking about 70 to 80% of all AI and machine learning job postings are actually for machine learning engineers. And these roles have existed for years. They're well established. And what machine learning engineers do is that they build models from scratch that are designed to do one specific thing really well. So think fraud detection for a bank, whether that model is trained on your transactional data or spot suspicious patterns or a recommendation engine for a company like Amazon, right? That learns learns what products to show based on browsing behavior or predicting which customers are about to cancel their Amazon subscription. So you can intervene before they leave. And these engineers are working with the company specific data to train models to solve that specific business problem. Now, here is where it gets really interesting. There's this newer title called AI engineer that barely existed before ChatGPT launched in 2022. And this title has absolutely exploded. Now we're talking about growth rates that are off the charts. And the reason is that AI engineers work with what we call Called foundational models. So that's models like GPT, Claude, Llama, these massive pre-chained models that companies like OpenAI and Afropic have already spent hundreds of millions of dollars building. And the key distinction here is that AI engineers aren't training models from scratch like machine learning engineers are. Instead, what they're doing is they're figuring out how to adapt and integrate these existing powerful models into applications and workflows that solve real problems. So what does a day-to-day -day actually look like? It means building RAG architectures, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, and in simple terms, that means connecting an AI model to your company's specific data. So when someone asks a question, it can pull the relevant information from your documentations and your databases rather than just making things up or using something like MCP or even hallucinating, right? It means prompt engineering, which is learning how to communicate with these models effectively to get that consistent useful outputs, which is now evolving to context engineering. And it means fine tuning, which is taking a pre-trained model and training it a little bit more on your specific data so it performs better for your particular use case. Now, here is 
something important that surprised me when I looked at the data. Even though AI engineers aren't training models from scratch, about 38% of AI engineer postings still ask for PyTorch experience and about 33% ask for TensorFlow and those same frameworks that machine learning engineers used for building models. And the reason is that fine tuning is a real part of the job. You're not just making API calls and hoping for the best AI engineer. Companies want people who understand what's happening under the hood and can actually customize these models when needed. And then there's a third category, which is machine learning researchers or AI scientists. And this is a tiny slice of the market. We're talking maybe a few percent or even less. And these are PhD level people working at places like OpenAI, Anthropic, DeepMind, and they're the ones actually training the frontier models that everyone else is using. This is a completely different career path, extremely specialized. And unless you're coming from a research background with publications and deep expertise, this probably isn't your entry point. So why does this breakdown matter for you? Because when you're looking at job postings, you need to understand that companies themselves are often confused about what they actually need. So you will see positions that mix requirements from all three of these roles because they want someone who can train custom models and to do context engineering and build production systems and maybe also do some research on the side. And that's really three, maybe even four different people that they're describing. And the competition is also real because AI engineer is a hot new title. So you're not competing competing against other people trying to break in. You're actually competing against software engineers from big tech companies who've pivoted by learning Langchain and prompt and context engineering. You're competing against machine learning engineers who've rebranded themselves. And you're competing against a flood of new entrants all chasing the same roles. And that's mainly because the salaries are so high in AI right now you're looking at 300K, 400, 500K, and heck, $100 million if you work for Mark Zuckerberg. But that's not a reason to avoid the field. The opportunities are genuine and the salaries are incredible. We're talking 150K to 200K for mid-level roles, 200K to 400K plus for senior roles, up to seven figures if you're really talented. Cloud engineering has changed and it's continuing to change and I don't think enough people are talking about it. DevOps, SRE, platform engineering, cloud engineering, they used to be distinct roles with different focuses. DevOps was about bridging development operations. SRE was about reliability and uptime. Platform engineering was about building internal developer tools and workflows. And cloud engineering was about infrastructure and scalability. But increasingly, they're all converging into one overlapping skill set. Like companies just pick whichever title sounds best at the time that they write the job posting, but they all want the same core skills. Infrastructure's code with tools like Terraform, CI/CD pipelines with GitHub Actions or Jenkins, container orchestration with EKS or ECS, security, cost optimization, the ability to architect systems at scale. So when you learn cloud engineering, you're not pigeonholing yourself into one specific job title. You're actually opening up to four or five different roles with one foundational skill set. And that's powerful because it means more opportunities and more flexibility in your career. And while this is happening, and as I've mentioned, we could get this fleeing towards cloud providers if the AI bubble pops, which is going to happen. And we're already seeing the big cloud providers like AWS becoming AI providers themselves right now because they offer services like Bedrock, which gives you access to foundational models in a secure environment from Anthropic and some open AI models. You get recognition for image analysis. You get comprehend for text analysis analysis, transcribe for speech to text, and dozens of other AI capabilities that you can just add to your applications through simple API calls, which means as a cloud engineer learning AI, you're not learning two completely separate things. You're actually learning how to combine infrastructure knowledge with ready-made AI services that cloud providers offer. And that combination is powerful because you understand more of a complete picture when it comes to developing applications that need to scale. Now, I want to speak specifically to software engineers because your situation is a little bit different and I think there's a path here that makes a lot of sense for you. If you already are a software engineer, the pivot to AI engineering is relatively straightforward. And this is because you already know how to code. You already understand APIs and system design and how to build production level applications. So learning Langchain and prompt and context engineering and RAG is just kind of adding new frameworks to your existing toolkit. It's not starting from scratch. And that's genuinely smart because it's a relatively small investment of time for a potentially significantly higher salary. And it makes you more valuable in a market where AI features are becoming expected to every product in every market. But here is the reality check. Because it's a natural pivot, every other software engineer has had the same idea. So when you enter the AI engineering market, you are competing against a lot of experienced developers who have basically made the same move. And that drives up the competition significantly for the same opportunities. But if you're a software engineer, learning cloud also makes a ton of sense because
because increasingly, you're expected to own the full life cycle from writing code, deploying it into production. The days of throwing code over the wall to an operational team, letting them figure out deployment has 100% gone. And having deep cloud skills means that you can actually architect and deploy your own applications end to end without actually depending on anyone else. So the question really becomes, what's your risk tolerance and where do you see the bigger opportunity for your specific situation? But honestly, the best answer might be both. And let me explain why. So here is where I want to share something from my own experience because I think it really illustrates the actual opportunity here. I've built StudyTech, which is an AI powered learning platform for AWS certification brand. And I've designed it myself and built it on AWS infrastructure, the architecture, the databases, the AI features that help students learn more effectively, all of it. Because when you have both cloud and AI engineering skills, you can go out and build a legitimate product that solves a real problem and have paying users. Those ChatGPT wrappers that everyone talks about, you can build them yourself. The SaaS idea that you've been thinking about, you can build it yourself. And not just a prototype that falls over when real users touch it, an actual production system that scales and handles real traffic. And in a job market context, having both skill sets makes you virtually indestructible because you can operate anywhere on the spectrum. Pure infrastructure work, pure AI application development, or even the sweet spot in the middle when you're building AI power systems on cloud infrastructure. So let me give you my take on how to think about this for 2026 and what I'd actually do if I was starting out today. Now, if the AI bubble corrects. And again, I don't mean crashes, I mean corrects to more sustainable levels where companies actually get more disciplined about AI spending. Cloud engineers are going to be absolutely fine because every single company still needs infrastructure regardless of what happens with the AI hype cycle. The cloud market is projected to hit $5 trillion over the next decade and that demand isn't going anywhere. So what happens to AI engineers in that scenario? Well, if you are an AI engineer who only knows how to call open AI APIs and nothing else, well, you might find yourself in a tough spot because to me, companies will be looking to consolidate their AI spending onto managed cloud services where costs are more predictable and it's more secure. Generally, by the way, everything is moving towards more managed services and hands-off. Engineers are focusing more on architecting and system design. But if you are an AI engineer who also understands cloud infrastructure, if you can architect systems using Bedrock, Agent Core, SageMaker, instead of just raw API calls directly to the open AI providers, people who understand the full stack from infrastructure to the application layer, you are actually in a much stronger position because you can help companies make that transition. And if AI keeps accelerating at the current pace, well, both roles will win. So the asymmetric bet, the positioning that protects you in the downside and lets you win in the upside is building strong cloud fundamentals and then layering AI skills on top. Because here is the thing, every successful AI application is fundamentally running on cloud infrastructure. ChatGPT runs on a cloud. Cursor, Netflix, everything runs on the cloud, which you can tell, especially recently with all the breaches that we've had, whether it's AWS or Cloudflare, you can see how the internet is being run in the background on cloud platforms. So. AI engineering or cloud are the places to be in 2026. And if you're looking to break into either, then I actually recommend starting with cloud as it's the easier and will have less competition. And from there, I'd look to add AI engineering as a phase two of your existing expertise and your career growth. As always, I'm rooting for you. I'll see you on the next one.